From a plant bearing an uncanny resemblance to doll's eyes to another that tenaciously winds its path through the woods. Brace yourself for this compilation of the 18 most astonishing plants that will defy your beliefs. Number 18. Dancing Plant This next plant exhibit is more of a dancer than a rat exterminator. Cadario Colex motorius is nicknamed the dancing plant, fortunately because its scientific name is a real mouthful. Unlike other plants that move when touched or exposed to light, this one only reacts to sound, particularly high-pitched noise. When exposed to these sounds, the plant's leaflets and leaves move wide and quickly enough that they appear to be dancing. The leaflets are connected to a plant hinge that facilitates the movement. Number 17. Rat-Eating Pitcher Plant Just when I thought eating Tide Pods was crazy, there's a member of the plant kingdom that rival us humans. The rat-eating pitcher plant does just what its name implies it eats rats. The largest carnivorous plant ever discovered was found on Mount Victoria in the Philippines. This pitcher plant, a member of the Nepenthes family, lures in rats by producing a sweet nectar. The rat sticks his head in to drink the nectar and slips on the waxy interior. Once inside, it gets stuck in the sticky mess and the plant devours the rodent with digestive enzymes. That's right. The plant eats the rat while it's still alive. Number 16. Buddhist Udambara In Buddhist legend, the Buddhist Udambara flower is said to bloom every three, zero, zero, zero years, and the last time was before the birth of Buddha. In real life, it's a little more common than that, but the flowers are known to be very long-lasting, even bouncing back after being crushed. In 1997, it was spotted in a South Korean temple and reported as a celestial event on the Chinese state-run media, which is atheist and does not typically cover such things. Reports were pulled, and later, the regime stated the flower was actually the egg of the lacewing insect, which does look similar. However, the lacewing egg falls apart rapidly, while the Udambara flower is long-lived. In 2010, the rare flower was also found under the washing machine of a Chinese nun. She initially thought it was a collection of insect eggs, but noticed it bloomed into a flower the next day. All I ever find there is lint, and if I'm lucky, a few grimy coins. Number 15. Pelican Flower Despite its name, the pelican flower does not look too much like a bird, but it does smell like a dead animal. The punjagudor, which resembles rotting meat, is produced by a combination of essential oils, hopefully not the ones you buy at that overpriced health store in the mall. These essential oils create the rotting meat aroma, which attracts flies. Once caught inside the flower, the fly is directed downward by trichomes and is trapped. From there, it pollinates the flower with pollen from other plants. Within a day, the plant's stamen matures, releasing pollen back onto the fly. Once the fly has eaten enough nectar, the trichomes wither and the fly is finally able to escape and begin the process again. Number 14. Lithop Many animals blend in with their surroundings and it turns out plants do too. The lithop is a plant that looks like a stone, so much that even some experts have a hard time finding samples. This causes grazing animals to think they're rocks and munch around the lithops instead of eating them. These plants grow in dry regions of Africa and are very efficient at storing water. They're also non-toxic and children that live in surrounding areas could sometimes eat them when they're thirsty. So in this case, you can get water out of a rock. Well, sort of. Number 13. Venus Flytrap The Venus Flytrap is another carnivorous plant which prepares to close when it senses contact, usually from an insect. However, it typically waits a few seconds and only snaps shut if it feels more movement. In this way, it avoids wasting energy snapping shut if the prey happens to not be there or if the prey has no nutritional value. It's good to know the Venus flytrap does not eat any junk food. If it's successful in trapping prey, that prey will usually wriggle about some more, stimulating the plant to further force its trap tighter, then it becomes hermetically sealed forming some sort of a stomach in which digestion occurs. Enzymes are released and about 10 days later, the trap reopens. Number 12. Corpse Flower The corpse flower has its own unique way of attracting pollinating insects 
like dung beetles, flesh flies, and other carnivorous insects. It puts out a scent that smells like rotting flesh or a corpse. This is made up of several chemicals, including dimethyl trisulfide, which also emanates from cooked onions and Limburger cheese, and dimethyl disulfide, which smells a little like garlic. Other chemical compounds, including tramethylamine, which is found in rotting fish or ammonia, and isovaleric acid, which gives stinky socks their distinct smell. The plant often takes years to bloom. Once it does, it stays open for only a few days. If you're growing these in your garden, your neighbors may be grateful the blooming smell does not last longer. Number 11. Victoria Amazonica Victoria Amazonica sounds like a new lingerie line that you order online and receive by drone, but it's actually the largest in the family of water lilies. It is found in the Amazon River, no drone required. The leaf blooms initially appear white, then turn to a light pink color on the second day. Native to the Amazon, the flower has not adapted well to being grown in England, but two dukes had a contest in the 1800s to see if they could have a go. They eventually succeeded only by replicating the swampy waters of the Great River. Number 10. Cape Sundew Cape Sundew is a carnivorous plant native to the South African Cape. Also called by its scientific name, Drosera compensis, it has long leaves with bright tentacles. As with some of the other meat-munching plants we've met, these tentacles ooze a sticky substance called mucilage to trap bugs and other tiny creatures. Once insects are trapped, the leaves roll lengthwise towards the center, improving the plant's digestion, which is good, because I don't think they make antacids for plants. Number 9. Hidnora africana The next time you think you have a crappy job, just remember, you could be a Hidnora africana flower. This plant grows underground and produces the single flower that reaches above ground. It has a distinct smell of faces. The dung beetle is its primary pollinator, so the flower attracts them by smelling like, well, dung. Number 8. Strangler Figure Next up is a serial killer of plants. The strangler fig is a name for a family of fig trees that grow by strangling other trees. They start out as a seed on a tree limb. From there, they grow their own limbs and vines up the branch and down the tree trunk or dangling straight off the branch to the ground. Whichever way they reach the soil, they burrow in and surround the roots of the tree they're growing on, choking off its supply of resources. Eventually, the host tree dies and the strangler fig lives on, built on its corpse. Number 7. Furniture Tree If you don't want to strangle a tree, you can also shape one into a chair or a furniture piece of your choice. An artist named Peter Putt Cook makes about five pieces of furniture a year without any tools. He simply manipulates the trees into the shape he wants as they grow. Number 6. Jade Vine The jade vine is a woody vine native to the Philippines, with stems that sometimes reach 18 meters. However, its claw-shaped flowers are its most interesting feature. Each bloom looks something like a butterfly with folded wings. These are designed to be pollinated by a species of bat that drinks nectar while hanging upside down. Wasps and butterflies also hang around the jade to turquoise-colored blooms. Number 5. Sea Poison Tree The sea poison tree lives up to its name. All parts of it, including its fruit and flowers, are poisonous. The pink and white flowers look like pom-poms. They're pretty, but you don't want to ingest them. The fruit is very buoyant and can float to many different coastal areas, similar to the coconut, but you don't want to bite into that fruit. The poison is so strong, the seeds are sometimes grounded to a powder and used to stun fish so they can be caught. The poison slowly suffocates the fish, leaving the flesh unaffected and edible. Number 4. Bat-Faced Cuffia Surprisingly, the bat-faced cuffia is not pollinated by bats, but by butterflies and hummingbirds. It gets its name from the bat-faced blooms of deep purple and red on its flowers. Meanwhile, bladderworts sound like something you don't want to catch, but they're actually another plant species with flowers that masquerade as something else. Bladderworts are carnivorous plants with a complex underground trapping system of bladder, like pouches that catch insects and other prey. Above ground, however, 
They grow flowers that look a lot like orchids. Number three, ladies slipper orchid. The ladies slipper orchid is sort of like the designer shoe of the plant kingdom. More than 30 species can be found in the Northern hemisphere alone. This orchid has fused petals that resemble a slipper or a shoe. The showy stamen welcomes insects into its pouch, then deftly ushers them out the back door after pollination has occurred. Thank you, come again. Number two, bleeding heart. The bleeding heart orchid has bright pink blooms which grow in a traditional heart shape with a white drop in the middle lending them the bleeding heart name. Don't feel too badly for the bleeding heart orchid though. It's one of the most popular perennials for shaded gardens. Number one, Snapdragon. The Snapdragon flower is named as so because the flowers resemble dragon's heads. They even snap open and shut when squeezed laterally, but be careful those flowers have a sinister secret when the flowers die and the seed pods dry up. They more closely resemble skulls that are oddly human-looking ancient cultures believed these skulls held ancient powers and could protect against witchcraft or even have anti-aging properties. I'm not so sure about that. I think looking at those skulls might take a few years off my life, not my face. Which plant piqued your curiosity as the most peculiar? Are there any I might have overlooked? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in.